Good afternoon. Welcome to Finding Happiness in Hard Times. My name is Ken Burtness, and I'm coming to you from Haleiwa out at the North Shore. Today, we're going to continue our series on big questions, questions that if we ask ourselves may help us lead a life that we want to lead, not that somebody else wants us to lead. So uh, to do that, uh, I've got my good friends and former guests here, uh, Leilani Madison, uh, Jamie McCuit, and Penny Smith. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you. Good to be back. Yes. What the, uh, the big question that we're going to take a look at today is a two-part question, like most questions that are big, uh, because we need to look at both sides of the question. So this is all about redoing. This is about sort of living our life over again. If we had the choice to do so, uh, what would we keep the same in this new life? Uh, and what would we change? And that's the question that's going to be uh, hypothetical, but uh, I think helpful to us to keep on track to a life that we really want to lead. So without any further ado, let me turn it over to Penny, who's agreed to be our starting speaker. And she's going to talk about things that she would like to stay the same if she had her life to do over again. Penny, yeah. you're on. Thanks, Ken. Boy, what a big question for this age, isn't it? Yeah. Um, in thinking about that, I guess I probably wouldn't do much else the same. I think the decisions that we make all the way along really are based upon kind of how we were raised. I was raised with entrepreneurial fam family. Grandfather from a Wyoming uh, cattle ranch to lawyer to college president to mayor of Boise, Idaho. Pater uh, maternal grandparent sold goods out of a truck, you know, with a mule pulling it to owning a very, very large retail uh, appliance, sporting goods, et cetera, in Salt Lake City. My father took that over, divested it, took us to a small town in California where he became a real estate um, developer. So I'm used to moving around a lot and making decisions because that's how their life was and that's how I was raised. And then I made some great inroads by studying a lot about strategic planning and understanding strategic planning. And so today, when I look back, I think, you know, everything I've done, I've kind of looked ahead and made the decisions. They're my decisions. Even if a crisis came up and I got in trouble, whatever it was that led me there, you know, I was the one who was there and I was the one who really put myself in that situation, even if it was a great situation or a bad one. So when I look at it today, I think, well, you know, all the way along, I'm the one who's done this. I mean, we've certainly had financial issues. We've had we have no children by choice. That was a big decision. I don't regret it, except I'd like to have a 13 year old around to be able to teach me how to do tech in my own home. <laughs> but other than that, so, you know, I have to look at that and say, I don't think I'd do anything much different today. Um, I, I certainly can assess all of it. I can talk about it. I don't, I don't, you know, ache over any of it. I'd like to have seen some things different, but I had a choice in how I resolve that or how I put myself into that. So I'm pretty happy with where I am today. And that's kind of the way I look at it. So you would do basically the same things over again. I did what had to be done and what I thought was the right thing to do at the time. So I can't change. It's like going back in a time machine. You know, <laughs> if I could do that, I would, but I can't. So I did the best I could given the time and I have to respect that for myself. Good. Well, thank you. Leilani, you're up. Okay. Well, this is a wonderful question and thank you for posing it. It's such a rich question. Um, I, I have some difficulty with it because like, I have that sense that, well, um, if I were given my life over again, um, I probably wouldn't know what I'd done in the original life. And I, I'd probably make precisely the same mistakes and, and bad decisions and good decisions and wonderful decisions. Um, and I essentially just want to say I, I basically am happy with the life and immensely grateful for the life I've had, and I bless it and thank God for it. And I think what I heard in the original question was the whole question of regret. And I thought, oh, I regret nothing. I mean, <laughs> from, from various points of view, I could have made better decisions, but you know, I did the best I could. And I'm grateful, incredibly grateful for where I am right now. At this moment in my present life, I'm extremely happy. I'm 
a feeling I'm feeling fabulous. I I love my life right now. And if all the past that I've lived led up to this moment, well, I think I did pretty well. I mean, I wouldn't change a thing. I I mean I like I like being alive right now in this moment. Um the question of regret, uh, I think, is best reflected in that story in the um, gospel where poor Judas Iscariot had the bad role of betraying Jesus with a kiss and then immediately seems to have regretted it, point, you know, with intensity. And he goes to the chief priest and he throws back the 30 pieces of silver. He clearly wishes he'd never taken the bribe, never betrayed, you know, Jesus. But the but the priests say, you know, nope, too bad, too late. It's, it's, you know, they throw the money back at him. And poor Judas goes out and hangs himself. Now, th I think the uh, moral to the story is actually that um, dear Judas had an opportunity to just say, you know, I made a mistake. I'll ask forgiveness. <laughs> and the one, maybe I'm jumping ahead to the one piece of advice I'd give to anybody living any kind of life is no matter what mistake you made, no matter what bad decision you made, for goodness sake, forgive yourself. And, and the last thing you want to think about is harming yourself or hurting yourself or punishing yourself or God forbid, killing yourself. Suicide is probably the only irretrievable error. It tends to put a kind of closure on a life that otherwise might have evolved to the point where you get old enough and wise enough to say, hey, I made a few bad mistakes. Hey, who thinks that? I don't think that anymore. I really just am grateful to myself for hanging in there. I hung in. I, I stayed alive. It wasn't easy. There were, there were times when I wanted to throw in the towel. But, you know, I'm here and, and I'm grateful to my past self that I made the choice to live my life as best I could. And I hung in, I hung in into what is understood in our culture as old age, but really is a kind of, <laughs> what can I say? I mean, um, it's, it's a, it's a new, it's, it feels like a fresh beginning. There's something magnificent about living long enough to look back at one's life and and be at peace. So essentially, that's my, you know, I wouldn't change a thing. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just grateful I'm here. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Is there no. more? Was, do I have more time? I didn't have, I don't have. <laughs> well, no, you're fine. You're fine. We're going to move okay. on okay. to Jamie. And we'll come back to you for things that you would change, which it doesn't sound like much, but I'm going to challenge you anyway. And so, Jamie, we're over to you on things that you would keep the same if you had a chance to have a do-over for our life. Well, like these two wise women who have gone before me have already said, I wouldn't change a thing except I'm the eternal optimist. You know that. Mm -hmm. So I tend to say yes to a lot of things. And um, sometimes my life gets overwhelming. You know, people look from the outside and go, I don't want to do what you're doing. So I'm always curious that I'm actually a guest on this show because um, I have a very busy life. So what I would change, the only thing that I would change is all of those things that I said yes to, as soon as it started to be a no, instead of trying to hang in there and work it through and stick with it, it's like the instinct of leaving a bad movie. I would never leave a movie. I'd always want to see it. I'd always stay to the end just to see if it had some redeeming quality or whatever. And you don't have to do that. You know, I, I have often said, I'll never get that two hours of my life back or sat through a lecture or been in a conversation with somebody that just isn't going anywhere. So my tendency to say yes holds true for too long sometimes. So that is the one thing that I would change. Otherwise, I'm with everybody else. The only way you can get to the Place that you are in life right now and lie like Leilani and I'm sure Penny am very happy in my life right now and any one of those decisions that I made anywhere along the path could have changed the course of every anything so because I'm happy where I am right now I wouldn't change anything except that one quality of maybe hanging in there a little too optimistically for a little too long okay sounds good now, here, here's the mistake that I made that <laughs> I should redo for this uh, program is that I asked three ladies who are very happy with their life, who've led a very productive life. And so 
we're getting the thing about, well, gee, I wouldn't change anything, but I'm going to challenge the three of them and say, okay, that's fine. That's great. I'm happy that you had a happy life. And I'm guessing that both of these are all three of these ladies, if they had a redo, if they could live their life over again, they would still have a happy life no matter what they did because they're that kind of people. So let me challenge them and say, okay, certainly there's something that you looked around, a life, a career, a uh, place that you haven't had a chance to be and say, you know what? If I had that time, you know, because Jamie's telling us about the time that we may not have uh, or the time that goes away way too quickly, if I had that extra time, what career would I take that would be different from this other one that I might also be happy with? Or where would I go that I didn't have a chance to go to in this lifetime? So ladies, uh, gear up your imagination and give us something that you, uh, if you had the choice and you wanted to try something new, it, you're probably still going to be happy with it. But tell us about that that place, that new place that you might find an exciting life uh, as well as a happy one. So uh, we're back to Penny. You're up again. Uh, imagination. Um, go, kid. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, this this is right up my alley because I'm a such a big believer in, well, something Jamie said, which was say yes. Um, and the imagination. I mean, when you give yourself permission to let your imagination take over or or at least play a role, it's amazing what you find. I mean, I went from covering Hollywood and, and whatnot as a journalist to high technology marketing because I was interested in high technology. Um, today, if I was going someplace else, I wouldn't change anything I've done so far because I've had a very full, full life. And as we've all said, and certainly as Leilani's pointed out, I'm very happy where I am today. I'm writing novels and I never did that before. I just wanted to do that. And again, it's imagination. I think I probably, if I had the uh, the time back and were a little younger, et cetera, I would probably pursue the space program in some way. I'm fascinated with what's out there. Um, I always want to know something I don't know. Um, something I don't understand. I don't understand this. So let's go find out about it. Why not? Um, so that would be kind of the way that I would look at it right now. I'm, you know, I just look at, oh, I'm writing fun novels. So what can I put in here? I don't know about, or that I'd like to add, but, um, I would probably put myself into something in the, the interstellar space program, not sci-fi, but the real stuff that's going on, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. Well, that's great. You know, I've, you know, that's one of the things that I would like to do in the next lifetime is head out to space as well. So you and I can head out to Mars. I mean, I'm, I'm ready for that. A pioneer. <laughs> Let's be a pioneer in the next life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, Lonnie, we're back to you. Okay. Well, first of all, I want to um, correct some misconception. The fact that I'm really happy now doesn't mean I had a happy previous life. <laughs> In fact, I, you know, I, I, to some degree, I was miserable much of my life. Um, I, I diagnosed myself with low-grade chronic depression, very well masked with a smile. So I didn't get any sympathy. Nobody knew, but I was miserable much of my life. So if I were going to do one thing different, I would get enlightened really early, like a minute after birth. Now that didn't happen. And I think it's kind of set up that way where you got the suffering is part of the deal. And if you don't go through it, well, you know, I mean it's just it's it's just part of part of the process. Maybe maybe I'd relabel it like um you know think of it in other terms. But you know, I mean the Buddha called it suffering. All life is suffering. You want a life Here's your suffering. <laughs> I would definitely, it would be really, really wonderful to speed up the process. I mean, I, I think I had moments of joy and bliss and enlightenment. And I think that's what kept me going. Um, but I'm having that joy, bliss, and delight and wonder pretty constantly, moment by moment. And that's the difference. I mean, that's that's it feels like okay. I think we get enlightened gradually because actually that's a pretty gentle way of being transformed. And, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, it's, it's been a fairly 
comfortable journey. I've never been starving, let's say. <laughs> I've never been, you know, I've been very depressed, but never starving. Um, so, so the, yeah, the feeling is of uh, kind of, I'd, I'd like to have accelerated that kind of fullness of awareness that enables me to enjoy every moment so that I feel like I'm alive every second in the present. While I know through much of my, much of my earlier life, I was stuck in the past. I think maybe even stuck in some kind of archetypal pasts, you know, the, the past evils of human civilization. I think we carry a burden of humanity. We're born fully human and we've got an unconscious, we, we've got an, un, an unconscious that kind of remembers all those stages of evolution when things were not good. I mean, human history has been pretty dark and we carry that with us and we carry within us the potential to transform and to, you know, then heal ourselves and the world. Um, and of course, we're impatient. <laughs> in, the middle of, in the middle of the journey, we often, I certainly often felt like, wow, this, this, is, this is not so easy. Um, I'm grateful I, I always, there were always joys. I, in terms of choosing uh, a work, I let my heart lead me into poetry. I simply found story, stories, the great stories, the great poems, obscurely compelling. And I gave my life to studying them. Ultimately, it's kind of, you know, been been a wonderful journey because now they are all kind of vibrating with meaning. Everything is coming together. I have these moments of feeling, you know, I understand it all and I'm, you know, at peace with it all. So um the one thing I want to still do with my life, it's so this isn't really something different in the past, but I want to be a stand-up comedian, and I've started to do it. <laughs> and I think if I hadn't had the struggles and the suffering and the darkness and the, the association with, you know, the darkness of human experience, I wouldn't have the desire to make an audience laugh. But I love the experience. I've done it a little bit in my new community. I'm living in a retirement community. We did a vaudeville show. And I find I just adore being on stage. I love to get the audience laughing. So that's, I mean, I, we'll be doing another show around July, July 4th. And I'm inviting you all, uh, you know, put out the word, use this little think tech moment. Um, but there is a joy in helping people to laugh. Because I think in the moment you laugh, you're open. And that's enlightenment. That's the moment where suddenly the thing you'd been thinking about isn't there anymore. And you're just aware of the incredible beauty and absurdity and gift that is your life. So I will, that's my goal. And I want to share it with you. It's been a joy to talk about you. Thank you. Terrific. Yeah. Uh, one of my other series is the joy of humor. And uh, I totally agree. I think humor is a way to a healthy, and happy life. Uh, so I'm totally in agree with, agreement with Leilani. And thank you for that. That's <laughs> looking forward to that. Yeah, I, I'm I'm waiting to uh, see some stand up. That sounds great to me. I love to laugh. So, okay, Jamie, we're up to you. Okay, I have to share something because of Leilani's story. And probably Penny knows this because um, she knows many things technical. What's that little area under your nose that's got the indentation? on top of your lips called. Do you know what it's called? I don't. I don't remember. I painted it before and I know. Oh, we've... okay. So I don't I remember what it it's called. <laughs> I, I don't remember what it's called either, but I remember Kaimana, my son, who is now nine, asking me about that. And my story for him was, when you were born, you knew everything. But as you came out, an angel went, shh. <laughs> And made that indentation. So now you have to remember everything that you've known before. And I think that's sort of the evolution of life. That's my been my approach. So when you said, what was the career or work that you would have chosen otherwise? So I've been uh, an adult for a long time. I'd say since I was 10. I was very grown up and responsible. 
And I didn't have an easy early life either. So the one thing that I would do differently now is be less responsible. And no, sensible. I'd be less sensible <laughs> because on my path, my chosen career paths, it's always been about the arts. And it's always been about promoting other people's arts and the business side of things. And so that's when I say the sensible side of things. But I truly wish that I had been that support person for myself and taken the arts a little bit further. So now in my later life, I am taking it a little bit more um, uh, seriously that, you know, um, income or status, or all of those things that might come with being successful in the arts, that's out the door. Just doing it for the joy of doing it. And I have often found with people that I've represented, that's what makes you successful in doing it first for yourself, because it's that something that just has to come out. And it's whether it's stories to share or paintings to paint, poetry to write, um, ceramics to make, whatever um just storytelling itself like that's the essence of life to me so that's what i do differently i'd be less sensible about the um creative stuff terrific thank you so much and thank all of you you know about you know sharing with us and i appreciate you responding to that uh, let the imagination go because i think what jamie's talking about and what i hear is freedom freedom okay. from doing things that we're expected to do that we have to do that we should do but the freedom to be where our heart takes us, not just our mind, but our heart. And uh, that's just a wonderful thing. Um, okay, let me, uh, one last thing that I usually ask my guests, of course, and you all know this, uh, is there are many people out in the audience, uh, and all of you really talked about some difficult parts at the beginning of your life. Uh, and there may be people in the audience who are having those difficulties. and you've. All of you have freed yourself into a very happy life at this moment uh, and that you've, you know, you've changed and uh, you're finding joy there. What's some suggestions that you might give the audience who still seems stuck back in uh, the more uh, expected stages or responsible stages or whatever, as Jamie is talking about, and wants to be free to do what their, where their heart takes them? What advice or suggestions? could you give our audience? And let me just turn it over to all three of you and uh, let's just share together. I'd say community is, oh, I'm sorry, Penny, go ahead. Doesn't matter, <laughs> go ahead. I, I, I think the solution to everything is community because I think one of the reasons people get depressed or are not handling particular stages of their life is because they, as well as they could have, it's because they feel alone. They feel they're, they're the only people going through it. So through my work with Family Hui and um, adoptive and foster families and things like that, I know that nobody's ever alone. Somebody else has gone through it. And that's the one piece of feedback I get every time I do a workshop or a parent cafe or anything. It's like, oh, I'm not alone. And there's such a burden that is lifted when you share whatever the crisis, burden, um, feelings that you're going through right then, that's half the battle of just recognizing you're not the only ones. And then you can follow the lead of somebody who has successfully gone through it or somebody who's in the process of going through it the same as you are. There's just, there's lots of other support holding you up. So um, I'd say find your community that you resonate with most positively because you don't want to get into a situation where it's a bunch of, what was that skit on Saturday Night Live? Debbie Downers. Debbie Downers. Like, oh my goodness, <laughs> you think you have it bad. Ma, I'm so bad that, oh. But, you know, get in a positive community that will be supportive of whatever you're going through by lived experience. That's the buzzword these days in psychological centers is lived experience. So, when people share their lived experience, it lightens those burdens. Great. Thank you. Uh, Penny, you were going to say something. Well, I'll make it really fast because we're almost out of time here. But um, there are also people who are happy being alone. 
um, and are, their community is themselves or one or two other people who like to be alone. I just make that mention. But the other thing is, is that that uh, one of the things I found is we talked about is open your mind up to new experiences. Lived experiences are only lived if you live them. Um, if you never live them, then you're kind of stuck where you are. So I guess the old story of saying yes is, is a good is a good point too. And uh, getting up every morning and saying, here's what today's about. Let's make today the best day of our lives. All right. So, Leilani, we're over to you. Okay. Um, community is such a key concept for me. I, I think, oh, I just add intergenerational community. Uh, so if you're having a hard time at whatever point in life you are, make sure you got friends and make make friends if you don't have them from all different groups. In particular, if you're relatively young, get a few older friends. <laughs> they, I mean, if you survive to this time in life, you have learned a few things. And you also kind of have a tremendous, it, maybe this is a well-kept secret, but the grandparent generation absolutely adores, um, you know, younger people and wants them to be happy and has a whole lot to share. So if there's any opportunities, um, I'm wearing a T-shirt for the Key Project, which is a uh, project that, in fact, uh, works both with younger uh, people up in it's the Haula area, but also Kupuna. And the, the opportunities I've had, and I want to create more. Incidentally, where I'm living is Pohainani. If you want some older friends, drop by. Mm -hmm. It's in Kaneohe. And um, if you don't know anybody, just ask for Leilani, and they will know who you want. <laughs> and I'll be happy to sit and talk with you. Um, I have the first cottage on the left as you come in. And my dream has, I think, I didn't know it was my dream, but the notion of living in a living in a house by the side of the road and being a friend to whoever walks by is kind of a wonderful way to to live and drop by. Terrific! <laughs> and I will take you up on that. <laughs> and, Yay! Good. <laughs> and like uh, like Penny says, we're running short on time. So uh, let me uh, thank my three three friends here, Leilani and Penny and Jamie, uh, for a wonderful session. And uh, I hope that we have passed on some ideas about trying new things and following your heart and uh, being one with the community and sharing in, in deep ways. Uh, one of the things that I've done uh, recently is that taking my friends who have been my friends for a long time and actually talk to them about new things, talk to them about things that we haven't talked to each other about. And that opens up a whole new things too, because we tend to talk about small things, uh, not the big things that we're talking about today with the big questions. So uh, I hope that you can do that and uh, expand your life and uh, go for that happiness. And that's what this program has been all about. So thank you ladies for being with me. Thanks to Think Tech Hawaii for supporting us as always, uh, Jay and Michael and Haley and Carol. And I hope you can tune in uh, in two weeks for our last show for a long time. And that's gonna be another part of a series that we're doing on libraries and the joy of reading. And I hope you'll find that and be with us at that time. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.